In this Jedi Survivor video, I will be showing you 10 cool features in the game that you may have missed. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any future Jedi Survivor tips and tricks. But before we do get into the video, to celebrate the release of Jedi Survivor, there's a chance for you to win your very own BD unit, and here's how. I'm excited to be partnering with a charitable organisation called Cure Rare Disease for the Jedi's Legacy Initiative. CRD researches and develops treatments intended to cure a variety of rare neuromuscular diseases. It was founded by the older brother of Terry Horgan, who suffered from an aggressive form of muscular dystrophy. Terry's help was essential to the progress of new treatments, trials and studies in hopes of saving those with similar illnesses. I'm sad to say that back in October, Terry passed away, but his courage has given hope to those still waiting for a cure. Terry was a fellow Star Wars fan and spent time crafting custom lightsabers, and we'd like to honour his legacy by supporting the cause, the legacy of a Jedi. If you'd like to support Cure Rare Disease, donate by clicking the link down below in the description. You'll be entered to win some awesome prizes as a thank you for your support. Plus, the link will also allow you to learn more about the cause down in the description below. So the first feature is different visor displays for BD-1. One of the five sections you can customise on him is his photoreceptors. Each photoreceptor you can unlock offers a different visor display when you are using them in this mode. As I talk about this feature, I will show you every different visor that you can see in the game. So you can see right here in this gameplay that it's not just the visor shape that's different, but there are interactive elements for zoom and wherever you look, a filter, and a few additional graphics. This is such a cool detail that I can really appreciate. On top of that, if you do want to use the default BD-1 visor, you can do just that on the fly with any of the additional photoreceptors. Just press Y or the triangle button to switch between the default and the customization view like so. The next feature is to do with customization as well, but this time with the lightsaber. Some people don't know that the complete lightsabers you can find, or the pre-order Obi-Wan and Deluxe Edition Luke lightsabers, actually come with crossguard vents. Even though all of the promotional material for the Luke and Obi-Wan lightsabers don't show a crossguard mode for them, they actually do have vents. These are custom-made vents, which you can see right here. These unlock as soon as you collect the full complete lightsaber, whether it be the Deluxe Edition, the pre-order, and even the complete lightsabers you can find in the game, such as Santari Kree's. Another feature relating to vents is the fact that you can actually change the angle of them. You just press Y or the triangle button. When you are customising the vents, you are able to adjust whereabouts you want the vents to point. You can have it point upwards or even downwards a little bit. This kind of customization is something that we did not expect, but once again the developers have excelled and exceeded our expectations. Sticking with the theme of customization once again, but this time with clothes for cow. As you probably know, jackets, shirts, and pants have six variations to choose from. You probably think they are just colour variants, but that isn't true. Some of them have extra details that differ from other versions in some small ways that you don't notice specifically from the front when you are customising cow. For example, Luke Skywalker's ceremony jacket in the purple variant has some Urabesh text on the back of the collar. The translation of this is credits. The jacket called Tactical has a cape, and the shape and pattern will change depending on the variant. That's why, if you do unlock new pieces of clothing, it's important to rotate them in the menu so you can see everything they have on offer. You might just find something more unique than you think. A fun BD-1 feature is holding down the D-pad to do interactions between Cal and BD-1. Some are just voice lines, others are extra animations such as head pats and a fist paw bump. You could do this in the first game, but I believe some of the interactions are on new, and not everyone knew this was part of the game because it's still not even in the controls menu. The next thing I'll show you is not an actual feature, but it's a nice detail. If you're wearing a jacket that has a backpack, BD-1 will actually get inside of it. I really liked this detail because it just makes sense. It could have been overlooked, 
but it just looks right this way. The Wanderer jacket is one of the examples of being able to do this in the game. Cal has a kind relationship with animals. Pressing the right bumper on Kobo will signal a Nico right to your location, so it allows for transportation in just a few seconds. Pressing the right bumper whilst stationary on a Nico will have Cal pet or stroke it along with a voice line. Still not enough for you? Find a Bogling, press the right thumbstick in, and you can pet it. We have another returning feature from Fallen Order, but it does have an additional option, and not everyone knows about this feature in general. So if you are playing the PS5 version, changing the colour of your lightsaber will change the colour of the lights on your controller. The PS4's light bar would light up in the first game, whereas in this game, it's the lights on the front of the controller that do change. Jedi Survivor adds the white lightsaber colour, so that's the new part of this cool attention to detail. This next feature also comes from Fallen Order, but some people don't know about it. All of the lightsaber colours have different sound effects, including red, which I will play for you now. Ever wanted a battle droid in the cantina? No? Well, still, you can do it. I don't think this is intentional, and it's just a byproduct of exploiting a feature already in the game, but let's just roll with it for the sake of this video because it's fun. It's already busy in Pyloons, but Grease can still serve their kind. To do this, you need to purchase the B1 Slice ability from Cage, the one. bounty hunter in the cantina. Then head on out into the world of Kobo and find a B1 droid to control. You'll need to use the force pull, so pull the left trigger to hold the droid and just head back to the cantina. Unfortunately, you may come across Imperial patrols or even a Wampa, so be careful as they'll attack your weak battle droid. If they survive the journey to Pyloons, press down on the D-pad to slice it with BD-1. Then you can hang out with it inside. Not a useful feature, but I thought I'd share it anyway because it's just fun. Let me know down in the comment section below which features in this video were your favourites. Drop a like to help support the channel and subscribe so you don't miss any future Jedi Survivor videos. If you did miss any of my previous videos, which you probably did, click on the playlist on screen right now and I shall see you in my next video. Goodbye.